the shot clock. Long jumper, air ball. Oof. Up and under, hit the rim, no good. Nice effort, though, by Brown to get a shot off. Ahmed Hill, and here's Robinson who looks back. He hears Buzz Williams shouting instructions. Buzz has lost the uh, suit coat. That fest will be gone soon, too. Yes, it will. Way outside and good. That big right toe injury. Which catch and release, and it's good to three. How about the footwork, too, by Brown just then? The one stride in, kept this pivot foot. He said, hey, if I'm going to be straddling the line, I might as well get behind it and shoot it for three rather than a long two. Only a 30% three-point shooter over the course of the season. There's the answer. Tom basketball, there's more freedom. There's the ability to look inside, but they're so unselfish and they don't turn the basketball over, Vern, that they generally make that good second and third pass. They only have five turnovers so far tonight. There's the jumper for three. Got it again. I mean, that guy hit a number of game winners. It might have been six over the course of his career. I had a couple of them. It was an awful lot of fun watching them. Boy, Ty Outlaw, the hottest. He certainly has that ability. But his size and that frame, you'd like to see him take advantage of it down on the box. Hill slipped on the catch. We've seen that several times over these two days on this floor. Outlaw finally gets it to go. A three. And how about the combination of he and Crawford? First time since Ish Smith and Jeff T shared the backcourt at Georgia Tech. You had two guys upward of 100 assists. Nice to have double playmakers. Outlaw, now he's finding the range. Asking for an interview, you wouldn't give me one, but you did talk about college and highest of all. Well, that's too bad. He's a colorful interview. Oh my gosh, he is a delightful personality. The process he likes to be called. Good ball movement leads to a three for Ty Out. Avoided Crawford flying at him. Open three. Outlaw. Second leader in assists for this team. Austin Arians, we understand he's an excellent three-point shooter. Both teams can score big numbers. We expect a game in the 80s if both are on. Outlaw, top side three. Is there it's an easy dunk inside? He has to make those plays, especially trying to get a win here on the road. Drive, kick, outlaw for three. This young big man, if you give him any light, any angle to the basket, he's going to be doing chin ups. A big time finish from John Collins. Wake cuts it to seven. Lede kicking it out, outlaw. Zeroes in the three. Water. Well, coming out of the media timeout, Virginia Tech has its two lead scorers off the bench. Seth Allen with the basketball, the senior guard from Woodbridge, Virginia. And Zach Lede, their senior forward from Dallas, averaging nearly 16 points per game. He controls the paint right now with the white headband. Got a, got a team to shoot. Got a mismatch inside. They got to recognize that more quickly. That's Javon Newton, who's a point guard for Miami. They've got to give that ball to number 32 and White more quickly. Four to shoot. Allen finds Outlaw. He hits the three. Rebound comes to Justin Robinson. Yeah, Virginia Tech will live with those contested threes in a short clock situation. He's got to get that ball moving a little more quickly. With this lineup here from Miami with Kamari Murphy at the power forward and Hugel at the center, it should be able to control the board and try to get something going inside. Time. With his second round in a little bit of trouble, able to get it up on the rim, but Outlaw rips the rebound away. Quickly into the front court, Lede. This ball moved by Virginia so Tech. Outlaw! Billy point guard, 
Justin Jackson has become an absolute dependable 20 point a night guy. We know about that vaunted front line of theirs, and they have tremendous depth in play. These 11 guys, Neil Pinson, I think, is going to be an X Factor as they get into the NCAA tournament. Well, the X Factor tonight is number 42. Is maybe the steepest that I've seen, maybe outside of Assembly Hall in Bloomington, Indiana. The fans are right on top of you. They're rabid about their team, and I love the energy that this building has had the last few years that I've been here. You know what it makes me think of walking up those stairs as Outlaw fires away. Boy, he is ready throw it behind him. Yeah, he's expecting Lawrence to be to stay in that deep corner where he's been able to knock down threes. Little miscommunication there offensively. Outlaw spotting uh -oh. up. Uh-oh, indeed. Assist per game over the last two. Now, they're fortunate to have a guy like Seth Allen who's comfortable with the basketball as well. Look across Seth Allen off the top. Mr. Big Shot. Oh, he's Mr. Big Shot. He's been sensational. Well, there is Mr. Big Shot had to make a decision whether he take the corner guy or take the driver decide to stay with the corner guy and that allowed Brown to be able to attack all the way to the rim now Miami going back to that matchup zone here with three minutes on the clock the Hokies and the Canes look like they're going right to the wire Outlaw give him three more Buzz Williams over in front of the Virginia Tech bench and a soft jog with Ted Valentine up the far sideline on something. Keep an eye on the wardrobe for uh, Buzz this <laughs> afternoon to see uh, how the uh, how, how, how the clothes peel off. Outlaw a three and it's six nothing Hokies. Thirty third of the terrific. year for Outlaw. Yeah, right now BC they have really matched or now exceeded Virginia Tech from behind the line and the other thing too is just keeping the Hokies off of the free throw line outlaw answers at the other end Justin Jackson now tied for the lead in the ACC with 20 or more games 20 point or more games. Jackson had his 16th of the year earlier today in Carolina's win at Pittsburgh outlaw Hokies back in front that's his 17th game of the year of 20 or more. Outlaw at the other end. And here we over on the deflection. Good hands on that time on the double screen as Lede got the deflection. Maybe was wide open and they were looking for him, but uh, good hands. Virginia Tech with six guys in double figures. And 80 points and Outlaw trying to add to it. Seven losses by six points or fewer. Rich, I agree with you. This is a really good offensive team, but Shelton Mitchell, Marquise Reed, Elijah Thomas, they are on a learning curve with Brad Brownell's defensive schemes. Here's Ty Outlaw. His first shot beyond the arc on tonight. Rich, in that first game, Clemson makes 13 threes, which is sort of atypical for them. That's what Virginia Tech usually does. But Virginia Tech, 16 for 17 from the free throw line in game one. Outlaw. And Tim Nestor. And Tim, you're going to see a lot of the same people out on the floor for this team. Both teams, I mean, Louisville down, B.J. King, and Tony Hicks in this game as well. So it'll be a short bench for Rick Pitino. King got a bruised thigh earlier in the week in practice. Will only miss this game. Uh, the story on Hicks has been really sad to think about that broken bone in the hand. As you see very quickly, Donovan Mitchell gets that one to go. You know, it does have an effect. This time of year, it's one, it's one of those uh, maybe understated stories through the course of any season is travel issues that we all have, but teams have them as well. You want to you want to irk a head coach. You want to have a foul up in the travel itinerary, oh. whether it's buses, hotel rooms, no planes, whatever. That just frosts them no end. Well, we share that as broadcasters. <laughs> and another three. Adele, the recipient from the lob from Mitchell. Yeah, that's, uh, but, uh, you know, if you're, if you're Buzz Williams, you're content to you'd rather give up a dunk than a three and on that end of the floor if your team continues to shoot this well. Hill. Good ball reversal. It's just outstanding passing. Tie out. Twenty four to zero in second chance points for Louisville. It's only been the uh, Virginia Tech three point shooting that has been able to overcome that, and that's dried up a little bit with Allen out. But oh. <laughs> 
Everything is switch out on the perimeter. Allen. Oh, my goodness. The iron unkind, but it's pulled down by Lede. They swing it up for three to Outlaw. He cans it. It's nice. A big win against Virginia Sunday night. Artis. Didn't get a clean look that time. Artis had Young open on the roll. Must do a better job of recognizing the open man and making that pass on time. Outlaw got his feet set and now Virginia in their offensive rebounding seven in the first half. That's eight now. The first one here in the second half, and they turn that into a three. Second three of the game for Parentes and eight points. Game stretch where six of Virginia Tech's games will be played on the road. And so special they brought out the pink uniforms. That's right, part of coaches versus cancer. Great cause being supported. Anthracite jerseys with a pink trim. A lot of the players wearing pink shoes. Okies with the basketball. Justin Robinson with a skip pass to tie out there. Last road victory, March 2nd, 2015. It happened to be in this building. Well, and I'm sure that's something Jim Christian would look forward to having another opportunity to get one here. But he made it clear to us that his best players, and when he, he singles out Bowman and Robinson, the backcourt that we talked about in the open, they have to play well on the road for his team to have a chance. Seeing some zone from BC is the baseline a sample of his skill set. He's not going to be discouraged by the three fouls or the fact that he didn't shoot the ball well in the first half. He's going to come out firing. There's nothing to lose for BC. Allen in the corner, shot fake. Outlaw up top, hits the three. Offensive rebounds gives Meeks the tip in. 43% of their misses. Number one in the country. Tremendous. It's going to be a huge challenge for Virginia Tech trying to keep them off the boards. Three pointer on the way, and a junior. This is where Seth Allen is so dangerous in the middle of the floor with the screen. You see Clemson paying him a lot of attention. He finds Outlaw in the corner who drains the three. Tom Outlaw. He was 7 for 47 on the season from three before the Louisville game on Thursday. Two for four against the Cards. Hits a three here tonight as Outlaw able to answer on the other end. And for Bradford. 30 points knocking down shots from distance. But North Carolina basketball is beating you up inside offensive rebounds, being able to finish. They must get back to that as well as deep, being tight plays. They're playing hard, but when you have a magician with the basketball, you're going to get easy opportunities. But Virginia Tech continuing to push, continue to play their game. Ty Outlaw knocks in another. In the contest, they ran a little one-four screen, allowed him an easy opportunity, knock down a jump shot for a young player. That gives you confidence, and he took it to the defensive end. And DJ Arnie had three blocks on the evening as well. At the top 25 entering today, and these two games before ACC play begins, they want to make a statement. Duke will be their first opponent in league play on New Year's Eve. But Day finds Robinson. Nice pass. Outlaw. Yes. Beautiful. In and off to Hill. Outlaw for three. That's really got to take out a lot of Citadel's ball game. Outlaw for the three. He can really shoot. Now with such a tremendous lead, Hokies have decided to slow it down a little bit. Another three for Ty Outlaw. Trying. A little over a minute to go. Senior captain for the Citadel. Another solid game for him. 
Three pointer for Outlaw. There's your 79. Saiz bounces out. Outlaw the rebound. Well, it's obvious the game plan for the Rebels. Get the ball inside. Leading score. DeAndre Burnett has yet to attempt a shot. Look for him to get himself going as this game progresses. Burnett, who averages over 21 points per game. Defensive end now with the shot clock inside of 10. Outlaw for three. Tie out. Ten and a half to go first half. Here, Maryland Eastern Shore. This is pretty good for you right here. You're about 10 minutes in, and it's a tie ball game. Outlaw unties it. Big shot right there. Ty Webster from the corner. Good movement. Zone defense by Nebraska. Allen faces up, finds the open man. Outlaw's not been shy since coming off the, the top of his defender. Got to attack. Got to attack. Straight up. Yeah. Big oh, size no. advantage there. Went in and out, and Lede pulls down the board. Again, for AM, no shot blocking. But Virginia Tech, as soon as they get it, this is what they're attacking. They've been very. Seth Allen has eight points. Lead is four for Virginia Tech. Morelos turned it over. Bibbs to the corner. Outlaw. Post touch. Lede. Outlaw. And that's two for two right Virginia Military Institute up in Lexington, Virginia. If you make it through there, your four years, you're a man. They challenge you. There's no doubt about that. 35 seconds to go here in the first half. Matt Galloway in the game for the Hokies. Cross court pass to Outlaw. Now Lede from the right block kicks it out. Outlaw going to try three. Yes. Chapman gives it to Rich. Now Justin Robinson able to steal the ball away from VMI. Dribbles out of trouble. And now the Hokies will just try and milk the clock. So Virginia Tech going to move to 3-0 on the season. VMI will fall to 1-2. Here's Outlaw for three. Yes! It'll come back down to earth, but at this point, 31-12. That's a pretty good separation marching for Virginia Tech for the rest of the game. High point back to man-to-man -to -man now. Bibbs with defense from White into the corner. And Ty Outlaw scores. That's two real defensively to me. Plus, the offense just looks crisper. Ty Outlaw. Let him run the offense. Ooh, tough on here. Over the top to the corner. And they got a three. And I'm not sure. <laughs> Ross, great story. Roman Stubbs of the uh, Washington Post. Had a great piece on there. Richard McKay with that heated exchange with the head coach of New Mexico. He's out long into three. He's running the point for the Liberty Flames. Well, Elijah Cuffey, 43% from beyond the arc. That's what he likes to do. That was third best in the ace on this season. Outlaw back to back threes for Virginia. Hand underneath in front of the officials and nobody's called it and i thought maybe that's the new trend in basketball today but <laughs> they call that one their that struggles obvious. meantime continue five field goals for the billikins they've turned it over nine times this is tight in their win in miami at the end of january so they averaged 83 per game jim laranaga said it we play defense like that again. We're not going to win this time either. No, they're going to get beat bad if they give up 83 points. The seven-man band fatigue managing the minutes will be a factor. Ty Outlaw. Screens to this point from that side. You've got to know to move your feet, show your hands, get there early instead of move into the offensive player. Outlaw tees up another three and a great start for Outlaw's actually shot a higher percentage from three than he has in two football point field goal attempts. Blackshear came away with the rebound. Beattie to Hill. Stopped by D.J. Vasilovich. And 
The Hokies reset their offense. Yeah, bad move by Beattie. He had Outlaw on the right side screaming for another three. Didn't see him. Alexander Walker, third team all conference. Blackshear, the second team all ACC. Outlaw! <laughs> he knew as soon as he let that one go. Guy who's graduated already will get a second degree at the end of the spring and obviously was itching to get back on the court even though he was receiving an award earlier today. Degree in sociology is working toward another in criminology. And there he is, the Bob Bradley Award winner, having a great, great start here, 68 lead. Likes pulls up. He tipped it away from Outlaw, who secures it. Alexander Walker going one on three, sends it back. Receives it on a rainbow. Oh, he's dangerous when he's got it in his hands, 46%. Outlaw's already got one bachelor's degree in criminology and on his way to a second bachelor's in sociology as well. Well, get, I mean, Outlaw has actually been in college for six years. This is his sixth season, sixth year, only fourth playing, but now back to back three points. The ACC. I'm sorry, for, for, during the ACC tournament, and the NCAA committee sees that. That's one to two seeds above, I think, that Virginia Tech will get if they know that he's back in the lineup. You know, and the one thing when you play against Miami, you know, even if you get a big lead, it's not as though you can put in your subs and get your bench players minutes because Miami only has seven guys. Brad Stevens, of course, was in the office job, gave that up to be able to go be the head coach at Butler. And I'm sure he didn't just walk in as the head coach at Butler, so he had to pay his dues in the coaching ranks. And it's worked out pretty well for him. Senior day has been. This game will be no worse than a four seed in the ACC tournament. And what does that mean? It means you get a double bye into the quarterfinals, and that is huge. This game is being played very physical at the point of contact. You better be strong with the basketball. Fighting for position. Here's Alexander Walker. He leads this Hokey team in scoring. Blackshirt does a lot of pick and pop now. He likes the fade screen and good job. Five on the shot clock for the Hokies. Outlaw, high arcing three off the mark. And a fresh 30 with that Ahmed Hill rebound. Virginia Tech's not a team that sends a lot of guys to the glass, but they get those long rebounds off those deep triples. Well, when they practice defense, Buzz told us, they practice the box instead of the paint. They practice with an NBA paint. Man, what a great find by David Nichols to Terrence Mann. In the first half, late shot clock, Florida State wasn't scoring. In the second half, they've made plays deep into the clock. Largest lead of the night for Florida State. It's the first time we've seen the Horn series. Blackshear puts it on the deck. Outlaw for three silences the crowd. That's a mistake. Weeks into practice, they, they called his dad and said, hey, uh, you know, I, I think we might not need to use that red shirt. Oh. Put him in the post area. He'll have a size advantage on the interior. He can shoot it right over the top. Or if a double team comes, R.J. Barrett is tall enough to be able to locate someone on the weak side of the floor. I think Coach K's got to change the offensive strategy with Barrett. Uh, outlaw for three. Unstoppable in the open floor, Duke. And I've talked about it all night. In order for Duke to win this game, they've got to pick up the pace of this game. Misses and makes, they've got to get out and transition. They're so good. One of the best teams in the country in the open floor. Second in the country, finds nearly 22 points per game in transition. Virginia Tech's done a good job limiting that tonight. Just with five. Ty Outlaw for three. Duke and Carolina playing again on the final Saturday of the regular season for Champ Week. We've got issues to settle in Blacksburg. Beatty gets in the paint. Outlaw for three. It's going! Looney dumps it inside. They come with a double. Durham tried to dribble out of it and turned it over. And the ball never got to the paint for Notre Dame. Never got there. That double team chewed him up. Outlaw That's for three. That's what they a couple games ago, only played 19 because of foul trouble. Other than that, it's been in the high 30s. 
That's why I think the three and two record for Virginia Tech Jay is impressive. Without Robinson, they're not deep to begin with. They're typically a seven or eight man band. But ah. he is so important in so many ways. They got it to fifth double double this season in the ninth of his career. Six thirty seven left. minutes gone by still a one-point lead for Virginia Tech Alexander Walker can get inside that zone he's quick enough no doubt about that that's where they you love to get the pass from the center up just like that that was well done that clock pulled out of there by Ahmed Hill Outlaw. He's feeling the basket, but that was a tough shot. And this is what the Virginia Tech defense does. It forces you to take and make tough shots, and that's what Banks did. Outlaw one more time. All right, you're going to have to end. DeVoe with a beautiful dish. 35 to 30. Great penetration by DeVoe. Blackshear, one on one with Banks. Outlaw, count. And here is Sherman again. This time he caught the side of the backboard. Well, because Outlaw ran at it. Outlaw contested that shot very effectively. On the other end, another end. The Miami, some of the teams that are in the back end of the conference that have struggled early, Dan, are coming around and playing much better. Miami being one of those. Beat Clemson tonight. That final just in. Miami, 65-64. Another bubble team. Clemson goes down. Outlaw! Shoot. Extra pass. Scarra's got to put it up. There's that Hokies defense. And it, again, great defense, but the possession's not actually stopped, which I thought it would be when the basketball didn't hit the rim on the 30-second violation. Big sequence for the Hokies going into the tournament. Yeah, Virginia Tech came into the game 10 in net. Clemson 43. And again, that's the new analytic system being used by the NCAA Tournament Selection Committee this year. And now they split the defense, just lost the ball. Oh, that looked like a travel. The crowd thought so. Jordan Wara missed the shot. That's why the referees just say there was not possession. Yeah, they give you that little up and down, up and down yeah. signal. Lost possession of the ball momentarily, therefore, not a travel. Wabisa Beatty, sophomore from North Andover, Massachusetts, who has done a very good job in this game, especially on the defensive end, getting over the top of screens. Ty Outlaw lost it with four on the shot clock. There. He feels a lot of people do. Louisville's one of the best jobs in America. One of the five best jobs in the country, no question. I mean, it, it is a passionate basketball market. And a three out of the corner. He's really done a much better job of accepting the physical challenge that you receive in the ACC. Largest lead of the night for Louisville. They need it. They get it. A three. That's three straight games now with double figures and made three-point field goals for Louisville. Foul law out of the corner. <laughs> Last with the fouls. whistles. More scoring. <laughs> Outlaw almost a 50% three-point shooter. Put him anywhere on the floor. Which probably doesn't make sense because the Pelicans want to hold off to see what Boston has to offer at the end of the season. But his agency has made it clear he wants to be in L.A. So I just can say I hold you to follow that? the story. Can I yep. hold you to that? Of course you can. Well, we'll be back here the next two Wednesdays. So we're going to check in on that story because we have no other way in 2019 to find you during the week. So we'll just have to <laughs> have people tune into the Miami game each of the next two Wednesdays to get the answer. And when you're on the road, I don't care who the opponent is, in conference play, you don't want to give any openings. Have a look in the corner, and that's going down almost every time for one against a center. And so I'm sure Buzz Williams feels as though he has a great chance if they can get the ball to Blackshear in the middle. He likes his chances against Tutu. Oh, 
Hokies got a little bit better with that last substitution, getting Ty Outlaw into the game. He rattles it home. Best. Now the sixth time the Hokies and the Orange have met since Buzz Williams took over this program. He's in his fifth season, just one and four against Syracuse. And a lot of it has to do with the fact that Syracuse always has the size advantage, but Virginia Tech has professional basketball for a while. Keep him out of my seat. <laughs> so Robinson, 27 points, 7 of 10 from 3, 4 assists. Outlaw wants another. Give it to him. And also another. And since then has been absolutely on fire. They were 1 for 12 and 14 out of 18 since the 15 threes are a season high. Six different players have made a three for Carolina. Games, he's been taking good shots, and when he's on balance like that and in rhythm, he becomes an even better three-point shooter than his 43% coming in. That's now 40 made threes on the season for Tiltress, and that is the best on this Wake Forest ball club. Again, another deep shot clock. Outlaw from the corner with four. Outlaw went high to get a piece of that one. Second effort also got stuffed as Shawnee Brown couldn't get it up on the cylinder. Kick out. Outlaw. Boy, does it all. I put that one in the playbook, Tom. Goodness. He's got 10 points in the second half and now 20 for Childress. Into the corner for Outlaw. The 10 day threes in the game for Virginia Tech right on their average per game and that's the best of the ACC going for 11 it's to be understood and respected Key from downtown I'm gonna say if that one goes in any <laughs> Surprise earlier in the season for Boston College being able to give them those knockdown threes. A tough defender, very athletic for a freshman. Outlaw into the game for the front. This town getting behind their team. Oh, met by the rim. Jarius Hamilton unable to finish. Good pass by Chapman, but he sees Hamilton miscalculated how far he was from the rim. Here's Beatty pulling it back out. Well, this would be the only three points, but he has been solid. Alexander Walker feeding the post. Blackshear to Beatty. Outlaw wide open. Bang! Harvey a miss from three. Notre Dame is shooting a lot of threes now. You like the decision to get Durham back on the floor? Yeah, gets this lineup. He shouldn't be challenged at the rim, but he's still got to play smart. Rex Pfluger is out for the season towards ACL mid-December against Purdue. Robbie Carmody, the freshman, out for the year with a torn labor. Elijah Burns transferred to Siena. What a swing. He went right into the Notre Dame bench. This is what Virginia Tech does. It's what they do to the opponent. I was there firsthand in Atlantic City to watch them against Washington. And they punched the Huskies in the mouth right away and never relented. They control the tempo. They make you play the style they want. And you better have versatile defenses that can switch your personnel, that can switch through screens, so you're always keeping guys in front. Uh, but you got to have an older, tougher bunch. Notre Dame's young. And this is a tough first matchup in conference. They got zone busters, so a zone doesn't work very well. Where this team is vulnerable, though, Kevin, they're not the best rebounding team, and you can beat them. To make something good happen. Scoop shot falls off the rim that time for Taylor. Taylor plays at Montrose Christian, big red shirt junior. Outlaw for three. Give Tech one more three pointer. That's. He's another one of the guys who missed last season all year. He's a California guy, but went to Bull City Prep down the road in Durham. Obisa Beatty kicks it out. Outlaw. There it is. Great so vision. smooth for Ty Outlaw. 
This is a North Carolina A&T team that is relatively confident winning four of their last five games. We saw them shoot around today. They're excited to be here, and they like their chances. Outlaw jumps for the triple. Possession the Hokies to speed them up. Playing confidently at their pace. Only one possession, but can you build? You see the ball go in the basket right away. Gives you a little bit of confidence with the defense that absolutely stymied you in the first 20. Alexander Walker back in the game. It's an outlaw three. Nine point game. Six for six in the second half for these Washington Huskies. Remarkable the turnaround from distance. But for the Bulldogs, just 0 of 3 from the field. Field drives in. No help from the glass. Offensive rebound. And the Hokies come up with it, courtesy Alexander Walker. Good looks right there by Luzante Fields. Uh, Outlaw hasn't connected on a three yet in this game. On the floor with Robinson, who has 14 points. See if he can do it here. I followed it, though, and converted. Hokies have kept him in check, but you can see he's kind of relentless. South Carolina State has only sank two baskets so far in the second half, both from Applewhite. A kick out to Cabongo. Outlaws wide open. Bang. Just throwing up the hand to try to poke the ball loose and didn't get the ball at all. Blackshear. Outlaw tries again from three. But finding him wide open, he doesn't miss that many. Stevens. Tipped into the hands of Beattie. Beattie, a guy that doesn't score a ton of points for Virginia Tech, but still a very good defensive presence. Outlaw for three. Yes. Out of Daleville, Virginia. Up to Daleville much? Where is that? <laughs> Straight up the interstate. Okay. Okay. Robinson, Outlaws wide open, and he missed seven assists on the season. That defensive pressure, too much for VMI. You know, the double team catch the ball deep in the corner. That's a problem. Or now backs it out. Outlaw for three. Bang. Fourth most assists in program history with 474. So he's very close to that 500 mark in his career. Here's the senior, BD to outlaw for three. He's got it. Hughley, a junior four, who has been a go-to player on offense for the Blue Devils. As of late, he's coming off a double-double in the loss to North Carolina A&T on Thursday, 18 and 11. Blackshear for outlaw. Yankees are four of eight from the charity strike. Big board from Horn. Outlaw, he'll take that. He'll and right back the other way, the Hokies did a good job of the offensive board by Horn. And a wide open three is good. Butrick is in for the first time tonight for Penn State, the sophomore. Well, I think that's uh, another Thing that Penn State will benefit from in getting Watkins back. It changes their rotations, get everybody back to their natural role, maybe more efficient minutes instead of quantity minutes. Right? Absolutely. Under 13 minutes to go, first half. Third tie of the night. Outlaw knocks it down. Tied at 13. Well, the timeout coming up here at the next whistle. As we're under 12 minutes to go in this first half. Outlaw knocks it down. He's I mean, learning. He's so detailed that when he came into practice last night, we were teasing him about his jeans, and he said it's the fourth time he's ever worn jeans. I probably <laughs> would believe that from Buzz. Exactly. Here's another three. Outlaw gets the board. He hadn't had many clean looks. Out of rhythm on that one. Down low, P.J. Horn. 
Up top for Outlaw. Right yeah. on. France is down to 31%. St. Francis mixes it up, goes zone. So whatever the Hokies drew up, had to cover both contingencies, man-to-man -man or zone. Now they match up, and they're actually in man-to-man. -man. Into the corner, Outlaw. You bet. No good that time from Isaiah Blackman. He's had two ACLs torn in his career. Back in 2017, he was the NEC All-Conference third-team player. He led the Red uh, Flash in scoring back in 2017. He adds to the dangerous scoring attack that St. Francis has, especially if he can get going physically coming back from those injuries. Outlaw for three. Little look, look at Isaiah Wilkins playing some point guard. Outlaw. Yes. So Jordan Forehand can't score that one. First minutes of the season, by the way, for Jordan Forehand. Outlaw. Hand in his face. Doesn't fly. You cannot allow him to just catch and shoot the ball. You have to force him to put it down. Robinson. Kick to the corner. Yes. Run out Robinson able to finish. So since the Gresham triple, Virginia Tech has rattled off the last seven points. Clean look this time from seven threes and 35 points. And their win against Harvard. And seven points now here today for Jordan Rowland, a two-time New York State and Federation Class B champion for the West Hill Warriors. That is a Syracuse area team. Under 12 minutes remaining. Outlaw.